Hello everyone, this is Mumbo here. Welcome back and today is episode 2 of the Redstone Let's Build series. We are back in my evil science lab world and if you did miss the first episode then you were going to be wondering what this is all about and I would actually suggest watching the first episode. That will run you through the plans for this series and also all of the crazy stuff that you can see in front of you here. Now the first episode for me hasn't actually been released yet. I record all of my videos one week in advance and the first episode of the Let's Build series hasn't actually come out. So I do not know how it has gone down. I mean obviously I know that the response should be fairly decent because it is a new series, that's always a bonus, and I tweeted it out and everyone went absolutely mad for it. But if you're not following me on Twitter, then you will not know about that, and if you aren't following me on Twitter, then I definitely would suggest it at that mumbo jumbo, I'll put a link to it down in the description. But basically, we are going to be continuing where we left off in the last episode, and just going to keep building our science lab evil place, and I think we're going to be doing a little bit of work down at the bottom here, creating some cool contraptions that are going to work well in this space. So the first thing that we're going to be doing in this episode is we are going to be working on our zombie and skeleton torture chamber. Now because this is an evil science lab, you needed to have some kind of torture in there. So what I've done is I've placed down little stone slabs where I want monster spawners to be. The monsters will spawn, land in some water and be carried along into this middle section here. And this is all going to be replaced by glass so we can see right the way down below. And then down there, there will be a few iron golems that are just going to go to town on these skeletons and zombies. And there will also be hoppers underneath them so that we can pick up all of their drops and take them up into some form of storage silo system. I think that's a pretty cool first project, so I am going to get to work on that. And we will see what it looks like once we have got all of the monster spawners in place and also those spawning rooms. That is now done. Through the wonder of MC Edit, we have spawned in a bunch of these zombie spawners and they are all zombie spawners I was going to do zombie and skeleton and I am still considering it but for the minute we are just going to be keeping things simple and keeping them as zombie ones now as you can see across the middle here I have got myself a pathway that is going to be the main thing that we are walking on and we will probably continue on the science lab throughout here but for the minute we are going to be working on this room itself and what I'm doing is I'm thickening out our walkway and then I am going to add a bit of white stained glass going up probably to about here and a roof will be on this sort of level however I don't want it to be too low because then um, no I don't want it to be too high because then it will be like grazing this wire and I think if this is actually resting on something it might not look so good so maybe I should do it one block lower like this and then it will cut all the way across here. We will only have sort of one block above the spawner. And I know that is going to mean that the efficiency does take a little bit of a hit. But I'm not too bothered about the efficiency of these mob spawners. Because obviously we are not doing it to get any good rates. It's not for the resources. We're quite simply doing it because it looks really, really cool. So what I'm going to do is I think I am going to place... A, uh, I'm going to place the roof along like this and then the stained glass will go along here so we can quite clearly see into the mob spawning rooms. I don't know if I want to have a divide in between these two. I guess that could work quite well. That could take us off into somewhere else. In fact, you know what? I'm going to add that in really quickly before I forget because I think having that divide in there could be something special because then we could take off to some kind of farm um, because this is meant to be like a technical based thing but it is also a science lab so all of the things that we're doing um, they need to like loosely relate to research or testing on animals so for example we could be testing iron golem strength or how many iron golems or zombies these things can take on I don't really know but what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the mob spawner rooms now uh, and we will see what they look like each one of those is now done and it especially looks good from all the way up here. We are finally getting rid of that boxy feel. I know we need to do a little bit more on each one of these corners, but it is going well. Now the next thing that I want to do is finally something redstone based. I know it has taken its time, but I want to create a lighting system that will go right the way around. So what we're going to do is we're going to do some kind of lighting strip that just goes right the way across like this. So starting from over here, we'll just take out all of these blocks. 
Um, I'm probably going to have to do some funny business behind here. But then we're going to run redstone lamps going right the way around like this. And what I thought would look really, really cool is we could either have them lighting up like one by one going round. That would be amazing. If we could do that, in fact, that would be quite easy to do. I reckon we should give that a shot because that would look really, really good. So, um, how are we going to do this? Right. If we take a look behind these redstone lamps, I'm going to have to do a lot of clearing here, aren't I? Because otherwise I won't have access to it. So we're going to need a sort of area. Ooh, it's probably going to be about three blocks deep, I'd say. But we'll just clear out this area back here. I apologise that you're having to see this. Usually I wouldn't actually include this on camera. But, um, right. So here is how the redstone should go. So we'll have redstone, then repeater, two ticks, three ticks, and four ticks. Right, that redstone runs across like that, and then you place a repeater there, is it? Um, huh, 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 huh. Oh, I've got an idea. Oh, yeah, because, right, it's a little bit tough. It's a little bit harder than I expected to do this, because that one piece of redstone would actually light up. Right, okay, so we can't do it like that. We'll have to do it some other way. Yeah, to, to make them come on, like, one by one... Is it's not tricky at all. It's just it requires a little bit more effort than um, I'd imagined, and also a little bit more space. But we'll we'll work round it. So that's three, and that's four, and then this one here. This one has to be back to one tick, but it has to have a repeater running into it, and then that. So we'll place that there. Redstone, 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 and then we can take a repeater out from sort of here. Four ticks like this. And then, uh, <laughs> it's really difficult. So, it's difficult to do it on camera as well, I have to be honest. Like that, and then we can run it into there. So that would actually do it, and then this will just continue on as per usual. So then we have the redstone, and we have a repeater set it to two ticks, a repeater set it to three ticks, and then a repeater set it to four ticks. So if we just link all of this up, using the redstone. Do you see what I mean? It's a little bit more complicated uh, than first comes to mind. But here we go anyway. We'll give it a shot. So we'll just replace all of those blocks there and we'll see how this looks. Is it something that I want to continue throughout the whole build? Yeah, I think that looks pretty cool, doesn't it? That does. And if it goes right the way around the room, like we're talking in each four corners, I think that would look really, really good. I have now taken out a lot of the light sources and also done the entire band of redstone and I don't really know what is going on okay but I definitely get the feeling that we're getting some phantom power sources going on here I mean is it this redstone block that's lighting things up no it feels like there is light just coming through randomly like it's not meant to be there I've removed all the glowstone I'm probably actually just gonna find out there is something stupid and I'm being silly but really, it definitely feels like something is lighting it up. Look, look here, right? We've got a really bright area. There is basically nothing above it. Even if we cover up all of these numbers here, like this should completely darken it. But it doesn't really. And like up here, there's nothing lighting it up. I don't understand. I'm really, really confused by what is going on. But anyway, I'll quickly show you how these lights work. So as you can see, when we flick this lever, all of the lights turn on going right the way around the room and then they come on over here and they go right the way around over to this side so yes that all works fine but like I say I wanted it to be a lot more dramatic than this I wanted it to be really dark and then it all gradually come on right the way around but it turns out that actually the uh, the light doesn't appear to be updating which is a little bit peculiar I almost forgot something I actually need to show you all of this redstone in action or at least all of the redstone behind it so we're just gonna pop inside I've actually just turned it off but this is what it all looks like and I'm fairly happy with how I managed to do it I managed to come up with a decent pattern that allowed me to build this quite quickly but as you can see it does use a lot of repeaters and redstone so if anyone wants to do this kind of system in survival then just be aware that it might take you a little while it took me ages in creative mode and i know for a fact the building things in survival takes about 10 bazillion times longer so you're gonna have to account for that but anyway what we're about to do now is we are about to place the iron golems down and what i just thought is that we don't actually want the zombies being down here now they might get a little bit caught up on this 
but I'm not going to worry too much because the thing is we want this to be on display we want to be able to see the iron golems going ham on the zombies that is sort of the idea of this place so yes we're going to step off around about there and we should be able to see everything past this point so we'll just quickly close up this area just do a bit of that I can never place blocks properly on camera it really is bad but I am trying to get used to it you may have noticed that in some of the latest Hermitcraft episodes I've done just the tiniest bit of work on camera just to show you guys how to do things or what I'm up to because I feel like it's a little bit better than jump cuts occasionally but yes now we are going to place down the iron golems and I'm sure you all know how to make these it's just the old t-shape with the iron blocks and then the pumpkins and actually I just wanted to have a quick chat to you about a few of the things that have been going on with Minecraft in the new snapshots this was brought up many times and I've tried to avoid the conversation but uh, the iron foundry now doesn't work or at least it can't be built I don't really know what's going on with that have they changed up how iron golems die do you have to kill an iron golem to get the drops anymore I can't remember but I know that they definitely nerfed it they've made it so that you can't build the iron foundry anymore I know that much but by the look of things the iron foundry on hermitcraft is still going to be working so that's fine by me because obviously we won't really have to rebuild it again hopefully if everything goes correctly but um i can't remember what mojang were up to but there were rumors that they were going to be nerfing uh, the iron golems so that they only drop when you actually kill them which really would ruin all iron farms and i personally don't feel like they should do that i think that'll take like a fairly substantial chunk out of the game. Automation is one of the most fun things in Minecraft. When you actually automate a process that takes absolutely ages, like mining iron, it's quite rewarding and you feel really good, especially when you build one as good as the iron foundry. So that's just my two cents on it all. I don't know how you feel. If you are feeling the same way, then please do let me know in the comment section because, I don't know, I don't want to be like the only guy who is getting annoyed about it, but I'm not, I'm not too annoyed because obviously we've already got the Iron Foundry, but the fact that they've removed that possibility from now on, it is a little bit of a shame. But anyway, that is enough chitter chatter about Iron. Let's turn off all of the lights and see if these zombies start spawning. We get a few bugs going around here and there, but um, got to come out of peaceful mode, obviously. So here we go. We should get a few zombies popping into the area soon enough. So there we go. And please tell me this Iron Golem is about to attack him. Mm, yes, yes he has. So there we go. That is cool. I like that a lot. So hopefully, if we just walk around a little bit, we will get a few more zombies spawning. I don't know, it looks a little bit slow, and that might be down to the weird phantom lighting that we have going on at the minute. But if we look down beneath, we should be able to see iron golems destroying these zombies. So that is, that's quite a nice little feature there. I had a bit of a brain fart there, because I placed down all of the iron golems with the normal blocks underneath them, and that is exactly what we didn't want to do. We want to have hoppers underneath so that we can pick up all of the zombies drops. But oh well, that is all fixed. It only took like 15-20 minutes to kill all of those iron golems. Which wasn't the most efficient use of my time, but now we are working on our item elevator. And it came to my attention the other day that some of you might not know how to do this because I've never really featured it in a video, yet I seem to use it just all the time. Now I'm doing it in a bit of an odd environment here. So it is actually going to be quite tough to build in this place because I don't really know how I'm going to do it. But I'll do it all on camera and if it goes well then it goes well. If it doesn't go well then I'll do a little bit more work off camera. So hopefully if we set this to subtract mode and we bung a bunch of items into this dropper you will see that we get ourselves a clock. That works fine and I will quickly go up above just so you can see the circuit for this in case you do want to build one of these circuits because they are ever so useful. So there it is. I'll, I'll press F1 so you can get a decent screenshot from the video. But now what we have to do is we have to run this into a redstone torch tower that is going to be going up the side of our droppers. My problem here is, is that I have a piece of redstone like right there. <laughs> so that is, that's a problem. Because then running into the torch tower, I suppose, actually, just had a brainwave. But it's not going to work because these two are going to be next to each other. <sighs> Let's have a think. Let's think on the top of our heads. Obviously, this is going to power that, which means that we might end up with just a constant signal. Let's take a look. It seems to... No, it doesn't actually work at all. So, if we just place that in there... Yeah, actually, that 
seems to work. Yes, that has worked because the item has been elevated. So that's good. That actually works, which is surprising. I wasn't expecting that at all. I thought that was actually going to create a constant powering. But it just shows that with redstone, you just need to give it a go. And even experienced people like me don't know occasionally if something is actually going to work. And that was a bit of a pleasant surprise. But now we have run into another problem. And that is the fact that we have some redstone here. But that is easily dealt with. I think that was four ticks and then we had one tick here. So we'll just relocate that real quick and run our torch tower right the way up to the top. So this really is a powerful little item elevator design. And then we will grab our hoppers. We'll run them into each one of these chests so that all of the items will run up into the chest and we can pick them up nice and easily. Now, obviously, this isn't going to be used much only because, well, we don't really need the resources and also it's zombie flesh and nobody really needs zombie flesh, but I thought it would be a nice thing to include in the build. So I'm going to do that on the other side as well and I will probably do that on or off camera even just because that makes life a little bit easier. So there we go, all of the projects that I had planned for today's episode have been completed and also in slightly less time than I had first imagined, which is both good and bad. It's good for me because it means that I've got less editing to do and the file size is smaller so it will take less time to upload, but it's not so great for you because it means that, well, you've had a slightly shorter episode than usual. But in the next one we're going to be working in on a few projects that are going to be going up here. I don't really know yet. I'm thinking farms and things, but I don't want to be stuck in the farm idea. I want to do some sort of science lab specific things, so perhaps I could have like a research facility in there. I don't really know. Let me know what you think I should build in each one of these corners. That would really, really be helpful. But anyway, if you did enjoy this video, please be sure to hit that like button. And if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mumbo, and I'm out. I'll see you later.